Now that the way off is complete, uh, there is a certain amount of action touch up uh, to do. There is hammer line and then let off and drop. And finally, after touch to perform um, before we're finished. And um, I thought I'd just show you a little bit of each of that. I've settled the keys on their back row cloth. And with the templates over the hammers, um, I can settle uh, the knuckles, the whipping cloth, and the, the keys on their half rounds. So once that's done, because I did a, a round of leveling on my way to um, doing the way off and the um, doctoring the balance holes, uh, I raised the keys a bit. Some of the hammers are now high. If I get my eye down at string level, hammer level, I can uh, touch them up. Now these are quite low. There we go. The hammer line is done. Now we're going to do let off and drop. First I go up to the to strike because there's a little seesaw effect. Use my gauge keys which are Part of which are th thickness gauges. So the thinnest white one is about a sixteenth of an inch for high treble, and the thickest uh, is um, about an eighth of an inch for the base. And we're set up to do uh, let off and drop. For the entire action. So this should just be a touch up since um, really the changes in the way off and the regulation really shouldn't affect this much if at all. And then drop. Drop is affected by it to a certain degree. Setting after touch with dip, I move the regulating rack back a little bit. So that I can eyeball, say, put my eye at the height of let off, let it go down to drop, and then 
return to let off, which is my ideal. And um, in this case, I can see that it's going past. So that means adding a punching of some sort. And you kind of develop a sense of how much it will take. And 20 thousandths is just about right. Now, if I do it with a soft touch, it comes out a little bit shy. And uh, so I'm going to see if I like 15 thousandths better, which I do. I want it to be comfortable. Another test of this is to put it through its pace, and then there's a little bit of play in the jack. I don't want it jammed against the um, repetition lever. And um, so it's, it's well clear of the knuckle. And that's another thing to check from the side, but I can feel that it is. Okay, so let's see. Probably I'll go through and do the naturals first and then the sharps, but I'm just gonna check this one which had been a sample before, and I would say it's right on the money. And um, because of the 17 millimeter knuckle to hammer center, that means that we need either a shorter blow distance, which I don't want to have, or a deeper dip, which I'm opting for. And the deeper dip has limitations and the main limitation is found in the sharps which I do not want to be above half an inch in height and these are just a little below half an inch maybe a 64th below and um, I don't want them buried between their neighboring naturals at full dip which they are not one of the things I could have done was move the capstans back just a little. And if we were opting for new weapons, which would be in the interest of this action to a degree, there, there's vertigree in the uh, weapon flanges. Uh, that has been treated, but it's there. So if we had... Um, new weapons, I could choose where the heel was um, and make a very slight change of heel position and capstan position, which would make the hammer effectively heavier and the hammer rise relative to the dip a little bit more. Uh, you get in a rhythm and this goes really quite quickly. And this is actually, um, I, okay, I'm going to put a white punching in here. Um, in my sampling, I determined what approximately uh, could be under all the punchings with leaving them just a little bit deep, um, which it seems to have worked out just right for that. Um, now I can... Okay, uh, let's see. Do I really like that? Looks like this one could be a little bit... That's, that's a little bit... Take the green out and put a white in. <laughs> Having a hard time getting my fingers to get just one white. Here we go. Uh, 